Blessings and peace to you, my brothers and sisters. We greet you in the marvelous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for this day that the Lord has given us. And as we declare with uplifted voices that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Tan Moss, our officers and members of this church, Greater Grant Memorial African Methodist Episcopal Church, it is my privilege to welcome you to our worship service.
Forgive us, Lord, for our manifold sins. You say it in your word that we all have sinned and come short of your glory. And I pray that you will have your, your mercy and your goodness will protect us. God bless the shepherd of this house. He and his companion. Thank you, Lord, for sending them back to us from any conference. Give us the opportunity to fulfill the vision that you gave him for greater glory. Strengthen us where we are weak and fill us up where we have been told him that. And Lord, give us the strength to do what you would have us to do in the way that you would have us to do. Teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Remove all strife and hatred from our hearts and fill our hearts with love. Lord, we love you and magnify your glory name. And we thank you for all that you have done for us. These are the blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. I'll be reading from Joshua 24, 1 and 2. New Revised Standard Version, and on to Joshua 24, 14 through 18. And the word reads, Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the offices, officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. 14 through 18. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served before the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of God for the people of God. I'll be reading from Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, the New Revised Standard Version. And the word says, then the kingdom of heaven would be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, look. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep away, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of God from the people of God. It is my privilege this morning to introduce the, to you the preacher of the hour, the Reverend Cal G. Bill Mayer. Born in Toledo, Ohio, he is the son of Cal G. Bill and Reverend Regina Mayer. He received a bachelor's degree in political science from the University of Toledo. During his studies at the University of Toledo, he answered his call into the ministry. 
Reverend Mangum holds a Master's of Divinity degree from Weinbrenner Theological Seminary in Finlay, Ohio. Before relocating to Jacksonville, he pastored Beth Bethel AME Church in Lewiston, Pennsylvania, and Bethel AME Church in Mount Union, Pennsylvania. He pastored both churches for four years and served as a spiritual advisor for the students at the local high school. Reverend Mangum's desire in ministry is to see people saved and live in transformed lives. He is guided by the Bible verse John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. After the choir, the next voice that you will hear will be no other than the Reverend Cal G. Bill Mangum. <laughs>
to be with you this morning. Uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity uh, that has been given to me to preach the gospel. Uh, so I would want to uh, thank uh, Reverend Moss, the angel of this house. And this morning I will be reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. From that reading, I would like to lift this thought, this theme, this topic. Speaking faith always. Speaking faith always. Let us pray. God of heaven, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, God, for this opportunity, Lord, to, to hear your word. Lord, we're thankful for what this word will do for our lives. We're thankful, Lord, for how it will save us, how it will change us, Lord, how it will transform us. Lord, we ask now that you will that you will bless, uh, that your word will be a blessing to us. All these things I pray in your name. Amen. Speaking faith always. In life, circumstances change. We can have money and lose our money. We can have friends and end up all alone. We can have a job and end up unemployed. But that shouldn't change our speaking faith to God. That shouldn't change our praise. That shouldn't change our worship. That shouldn't change our devotions to the Lord. God is always present with us. He is our help in the time of trouble. He is our counselor and our guide. He is a God that has given us all that we have, and He is every, and He provides everything that we need. We've got to keep on talking faith, keep on living faith, and don't ever let go. In today's song, we find David. We find David's words about speaking faith in our circumstances. David spoke faith in the good times. We should speak faith in the good times. David spoke faith in the good times. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. In his circumstance, in David's circumstance, he wanted for nothing. He was made to lie down in green pastures. He was led by still waters. He was even following the right paths. David was in a good place in his life. David had all the blessing and abundance of God. But isn't that how anyone would feel? Wouldn't you be able to speak the word of God and have faith in God? when everything is going the right way? Would you believe and trust in the Lord like never before when everything was everything and you had nothing that you needed or wanted? Wouldn't anybody have that kind of faith when they're walking beside quiet waters and laying down in the pasture? Wouldn't anybody uh, have a belief and trust in God in those kinds of circumstances? Of course, when you've got a new car and your son has graduated from college, you feel good. Of course, 
when you when your house is at peace and there's no chaos and you're going on to the and you walk on the job and everything is okay. Of course you can praise God then. Of course you can speak God's word. Of course you can do what God has called you to do when everything in life is okay. But when life puts you in a valley, when life puts you in a tough situation, what are you going to do then? Will you still be able to speak the word of God? Because valleys happen to all of us. Valleys are low, low places where there's no friends and no family. Valleys are low, low places where it seems dark and where it seems unending. Valleys are the kinds of places where people can lose their lives. Valleys are everything. Happen. Valleys happen to us. Ah, but David didn't let the valley shake his faith. David didn't let the valley shake his belief. David kept on trusting God. The Bible says that even though he walked through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. It's amazing that David would say that when we look at the valley. It wasn't just any valley, but it was a valley of the shadow of death. It was a valley where death could potentially happen. It was the kind of valley where death was on the heels of David. It was the kind of valley where David could have lost his life. The valley was a hard situation for David. But David's got a word on his mouth. He says, I will fear no evil. Mm. In this life, we have reasons to be afraid. We have reasons to fear. We have an unknown, we have an election going on right now where we're not sure who's going to win. We got an election going on right now where we are biting our nails trying to find out who's going to ultimately be the winner. Hundreds of thousands of votes our, our votes could determine the winner or the loser. But what is our world going to do? We're looking at a pandemic where hundreds of thousands of people are losing their lives. We're looking at the economy drop. We're watching things go bad really fast. And it's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to say in our valley? What are we going to do when trouble has hit our life and we don't know what to do? What can we say to our valley? Well, today we can say, I will fear no evil because God is with me. That's what we can say. We can stand up to cancer and we can stand up to HIV AIDS and we can stand up to unemployment and we can stand up to a failing economy and we can say, I will fear no evil because God is with me. We're standing here because of God. David would not allow the circumstance to dominate him to the point that he gave up his mouth and he said nothing. David stood up and he spoke the word of God. He said, I will fear no evil. I am not giving up to this. And that's what we have to say. I'm not giving up to this. I will fear no evil. I will not be controlled by fear. I will not be, uh, I will not submit my life to fear. But I'm going to stand up and say, I will fear no evil because I know that God is with me. Do you realize today that God is with you? 
Do you realize today that God is standing by? Do you realize today that God lives on the inside and that because he lives on the inside, you have power over the enemy? The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God is with us. Valleys happen in life, sometimes because we need change. Valleys happen in life, sometimes because we need to be transformed. Yes, our life needs help in some areas. There are some things that God wants to do in our life to make it different. Different in our thinking, different in our speaking, different in our actions. God wants to make a change. And that change happens in the valley. The Bible says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff come to comfort David while he's in the valley. The rod and staff not come to comfort, excuse me. The rod and staff are there for David to help him. The rod and the staff are from the shepherd, are the shepherd's rod and staff. The same shepherd that David called on at the beginning of the song is the same shepherd that he's calling on in this part of the, of, of the song. David knows that there's a shepherd in his life. David knows that someone is guiding him even to the valley. David knows that he's not out in the middle of nowhere trying to figure things out, but he knows that God has a great task for him in the valley. He has something for him to do in a circumstance that seems impossible to overcome. He's got something to show him that he has never seen before. There's a power in the valley that's not anywhere else. Oh yes, there is power in our suffering. The three Hebrew boys would have never known what it was like to walk around in a fire unbound and unburned if it was not for the furnace. Daniel would have never known what it was like to sleep in a lion's den if it was never for the lion's den. If he, if he had never been there, then we would not know him to be the one. We would not know Daniel in the way that we do. Daniel has a great testimony because he laid down in the middle of lions and he fell asleep trusting God. There's a witness that David wants to bring forth to us and that witness is this. That we are not alone in the valley. That God is with us even when we feel like dying. Even when we feel like giving up. David has got God in his life. You are not alone. God is right there with you. When he comes to comfort with the rod and the staff, he's coming to bring about change in your life. He will change you with the rod and the staff because the rod and the staff are used for discipline and for walking. The discipline of the Lord comes not by his hand, but by how he uses the circumstance. God uses our circumstances to transform who we are. So
So when you look at your valley or your negative situation, you have to look at those circumstances and know that God is doing something in your life. Know that when you see the storm starting to brew, know that when you see trouble starting to come, that it ain't coming without reason. It ain't coming without purpose. It's not coming not to establish you and to make you great. God is doing something powerful in your life. So when you see a valley come into your life or you enter into a valley situation, don't think that your life is over. Know that God is going to bless you beyond your imagination. God's got something special in store for you. In the valley, God is teaching David and teaching us how to believe and trust in him more. God is also teaching us how to live a different life. Because many of us were in the valley because our lives were going in the wrong direction. We weren't doing all of what God wanted for us to do. So he comes with his staff and with his rod to redirect our lives. The rod and the staff were there to help the sheep, to discipline them and get them back in the herd. So that when they fell into ditches, he would be able to hook them with the rod. I'm sorry. When he fell into ditches, he'd be able to hook them with the rod and bring them up out of the ditch. And haven't we been in some ditches? Haven't we been in some places that we know we shouldn't have been at a time we know we shouldn't have been? Haven't we hung around some people in our life that shouldn't have been there, but they were there because we wanted them there? Are we, haven't we done things that we know we shouldn't have done, but continue to do anyway? Oh, God is there to help the sheep to do what God has called them to do because the sheep has got great potential. I mean, what can you get from a sheep? Well, you can get milk from a sheep. You can get lamb chops from a sheep. You can get lamb chops from a sheep. You can get wool from a sheep. You can get wool for clothing. You can get wool for blankets. You can get wool to lay on your couch. But a sheep's got a lot of potential. And that's why they, God comes to David in the valley because the sheep have got a lot of potential. And God is not going to lose you to a valley. God is not going to lose you to sickness. God is not going to lose you to disease. No, God has a work for you to do if you just hold on to his unchanging hand. All the day, it doesn't matter where you are. God got his hand of grace on your life, and he's not letting go. Because he said in his word that I will be with you even until the end. That I will be with you whether it's raining or whether it's cold. 
Thank you. 